Welcome. This video is in regard to question 47, 48, and 49 on page MC25. So you're waiting. What's the answers? The answers I got were B, B, and D. B, B, and D. So if you missed any of those, let's keep watching. A certain county had a thousand farms. Corn is grown on only a hundred of those farms and none of the others. In order to estimate the total farm acreage of corn for the county, two plans are proposed. So right away, I'm already thinking, I don't want to randomly just pick farms because there's a thousand farms. So maybe the other farms are strawberries and oranges and sugar beets and potatoes, who knows? I don't want to pick those because none of those are going to give me the, to help me calculate the total farm acreage of corn for the county. So right away, I hate plan one because a sample of any old 20 farms at random will give me bad data right off the bat. So I'm gonna read plan two because I'm worried that they would say choose neither since neither can give me the total. Well, I already don't like D because I know that as, as long as I take enough samples, I can use a sample to estimate information about the population. So um, I'm already thinking that maybe D is wrong because I know I can make an inference about the population, but I can't unless it's designed properly. So definitely, this is a design question. Is this designed properly? So let's take a look. Definitely one is not designed properly because I'm not even choosing the corn ones. I might get a different one, so that's not gonna help me. So, and I might end up getting not enough corn ones and it, I need enough corn ones. So taking a look at B, it says identify the 100 corn growing farms, so that's good. Take a sample of 20, and that sounds like that's probably a good size sample, and then estimate the mean corn acreage for corn growers in a confidence interval. And so I think that sounds really great too. And then once I decide, so I'm, I could say something like, I'm 95% confident that the interval from blank to blank captures the two, true mean average of corn grown in this county. And that's a pretty good way to estimate. And then once I figure out what that mean is, I can multiply by 100 to get the total. Great plan, that's why I'm gonna pick B. I like B because it says choose plan two. Next question. The question asks 48, which of the following can be used to show a cause and effect relationship between two variables? So we say in this class, never, ever, 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 ever go there as a statistician. That's really not our job to call cause and effect. But ultimately in real life, you can get cause and effect, which is why we study it in science classes. So what can we do? How can we get cause and effect? Well, it's not in a census because that's done by statisticians. And it's not in an observational study, because in an observational study, you're merely observing. You're not isolating any variables whatsoever. So you could be observing people lose weight, and you may have no idea why, because you're not really isolating whether it's, did they increase their drinking of water? Did they increase their exercise? You're not sure. You're just observing. Here, a sample survey, again, surveys don't work. The only thing that works is a controlled experiment. So that's why when you guys take science classes, you hear them use words like cause and effect because they've isolated variables. And they've isolated it to the point where they can pretty much conclude no other change happened except for that one item. So B is my best answer. Now, these two were B. We didn't like D. This answer is D. So it looks like I don't have a lot of choices though. It's really a yes or no answer. And I've got to read the question to decide which one, which one, the yes or the no, 
is the best fit. So it says to check the effect of cold temperature on two rubber bands, one box A and a box B are tested. So we're interested in uh, box A rubber band and box B rubber bands. Let's just draw a little picture there so you can kind of picture the box full of rubber bands. And then it says 10 bands from A are placed in a freezer for two hours. And 10 bands B, room temperature. Right off the bat, if you've been in any science class, that sounds weird. We don't like that because we don't have any idea at the end of our experiment comparing if A stayed elastic in the freezer or if B could have stayed elastic in the freezer because we never put B in the freezer. And so ultimately we tested the rubber bands, but this would have been the way you would test the rubber bands if they were exactly the same brand or just one brand to test whether A, how A performs in the freezer at room temperature, you'd put some in the freezing and some at room temperature. So we know we're gonna say no. Well, then we just keep reading and we decide, why is it no? And again, it's because there was nothing wrong with the temperature. The temperature of the freezer wasn't really part of the experiment. We just wanted to test to see if changing the temperature. So more temp, doesn't make sense. C's out. More than two brands. I don't need more than two brands. I, I test two brands of things all the time. Means are not pro proper statistical comparisons. We compare means all the time. So it has to be D, but this is also reminding us of a lot of other questions. You don't know if it's the temp or the brand that's making a difference in your study. So therefore, each brand needed an opportunity to both be in the freezer and be at room temperature if you are actually going to pair, compare those things in the end. Thank you for joining us.